Hey guys, it's Paul. I'm going to give you a quick introduction to Mac Keeper. I've just installed it over the last few days on my Mac. My Mac was playing up in, but it's pretty slow and sluggish. And I didn't want to dive into all the back end stuff myself. I'm not, I'm not as as Mac savvy as I used to be. And I thought I'd give Mac Keeper a go. So I'm going to give you a, a, an introduction to what it has done and uh, an overview of its abilities. What's great in these videos if you pause me and tell me in the comments why you're here, what you're looking to learn, and if I haven't covered it covered it in this video, I'll reply to you with maybe another video or I can get some information off Mac Keeper. Uh, at the time of recording, I am not an affiliate or anything with Mac Keeper, but that I might be in the future. If you go to pnuk.com uh, forward slash Mac Keeper, if I've got any discount codes, or anything uh, there might be a sign up link where I get paid a little bit of commission but at the moment I am not an affiliate uh, as we speak so let's dive into pricing and what Mac Keeper is it is a program that's going to run your Mac that's going to give you virus protection protection it's going to clean up your disk space it's going to check performance it's going to look for uh, programs that are not installed uninstalled properly or you can't uninstall them properly uh, there's a VPN and an ad blocker. Uh, so there's a lot of good little features that I think, and I've been actually quite surprised by it. The pricing, I pay the monthly because I'm still working out whether I'm going to use it. So I dived into a month-on-month -month plan at 1095 If I fall in love with it and I think my Mac needs it, because what might happen is my Mac will run smoothly and I'll probably uninstall it and then probably go back to it. But... If I was to 100% um, go with Mac Keeper, I would definitely be on a yearly plan paying 62 quid, which is a £5 a month uh, plan. Or um, if you've got multiple Macs in your family, you can take this 12-month plan, which uh, would obviously is actually the same price as one Mac. So it seems like it would be a better deal. So five twenty two a month or ten ninety five per month, uh, if you if you play annually or uh, month to month. Right. So this is not a how to install it or anything like that. I've already done my installation. I've already done a lot of my checks, um, and it's already been running for a few days. My Mac seems to be faster. I've cleaned a lot of things up, and I'll just I'll just run you through all the various features that we're using. So obviously an antivirus, I've installed the antivirus, we can start a scan. It has gone through, it didn't find a scan, it didn't find a virus on my Mac. Now, a lot of people will say, there's, there's different thoughts on whether you need an antivirus on your Mac or not. I, I probably think you do in the modern day, because Pip Macs are getting more popular and the viruses are probably getting easier to write. So, first thing's an antivirus, like any antivirus where it's going to keep checking all those naughty, naughty viruses that go around uh, that could just slow your Mac down, could could be sat in the background there. So if you, you know, get a trial, run the antivirus, see what's happening. Same with the adware, uh, any websites or anything you go on that can that can add the adware. I don't know exactly what adware is, but it's, it's some sort of, oh, well, let's Google it, shall we? What is adware, right? What is adware? Uh, da, da, da. Software that automatically displays or downloads advertising materials such as banners or pop-ups when user is online. So it's kind of yeah, it's going to pop on pop-up adverts, going to pop up different things on people's websites. Uh, it's going to be posting things to you to see uh, without your permission and without the website's permission at times as well. Safe cleanup. You can obviously look for any. Uh, logs, caches, trash, things that aren't being used, mailed attachments that you might want to get rid of, uh, just to clean up that laggy part of your computer. Obviously, I've done it all to my computer, so there's not a lot to go through. The, the junk folder's empty and all that sort of stuff. But if it can find free disk space that you don't need, it's going to go off and find it. Look, it's only just found 20, so past logs, any caches, languages I don't use, the trash is already empty. And I've had no new mail that I've got attachments for. Oh, but I can clean that out and let it go. Duplicate finder I like is if you've got multiple files on your computer, 
like like a lot of times I'll download a um I'll download something and then download it again and then accidentally download it again a week or two later. And if you've got anything there, it will go and find your um, duplicates where you can click on them to delete them or delete the duplicate. Obviously, be careful. But if you find any massive files that are doubled up, or you may not even need the file, but um, you might have you might have um, saved the same file a couple of times. It's going to find all them duplicates in there. I probably should have done this yesterday when I was doing it, but I wanted to go play with it, play with it, make sure it worked. Smart uninstaller. So if you've got any applications on your computer that you've um, maybe got rid of or that you've forgot to get rid of or you just want to go through the applications and uh, see what's on your computer, there's things on here that I didn't even realize. So there's 28.86 gigabytes of apps and plugins. So if I go to my apps, I can go through and say maybe this I don't use anymore. Uh, da, da, da. I can go, uh, I still play Jigsaw, NordVPN. I may do a video on that, but I'll, un I'll uninstall it actually. Because um, the video I'll do, I'll, I'll go through it. Logo list, all these I still use. Uh, Spotify, yeah, but I can remove those items that I no longer use and it quickly removes the whole thing. Now, sometimes when you remove um, uh, an app in the application, you go to application folder and delete it. Maybe it leaves things behind. So if you go to applications and just move these to the bin, it can leave files behind. So there is other things being removed back there. If you've got any widgets installed, any plugins, things that you can't even remember signing up for. Same with your browser extensions. What plugins are you running on browser? So I still use uh, Grammarly. I still use vidIQ and TubeBuddy. The web protection is from uh, this. These two are no longer apps I use. And I don't use Hootsuite anymore or Kindle Cloud Reader. Uh, so I can remove these apps as well. So I don't need them to be running on my Chrome, which is just closed in the background and it's just reopened. So there's just there's things that at one touch, one click, I can see. Um, I can see what's on my Mac to remind me to clear out some space to make sure it's not running. Um, and we're going to get to that login items. Memory usage. It says here after you close programs, they keep keep taking up memory until the next reboot. Free up available memory. So this is your RAM, um, where where certain programs running have taken up a certain amount of your memory. And you want to clear it, you can just clean the memory. And that will uh, sort of make sure that the, the RAM is emptied. Anything that has been running on your computer for a while that is no longer running. It will clean it off. It doesn't take long, I don't think. I'll keep going as that one's going. Oh, there you go, it's cleared. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not cleared. Um, update tracker. So a lot of times maybe your computer can go slow because you haven't updated uh, the various programs. There's certain programs on your, uh, on your Mac that aren't up to date. So these two, uh, Microsoft Teams and Cloud app. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll update me. Some applications, quit all. Cloud app is going to try and close and open again it says it's updated microsoft teams i can't i'm not sure i've ever used microsoft teams is updating so we can see these programs may be running older versions and we don't even know it because it's not obvious all the time where to update a, a program on your mac is it it's not always it doesn't always jump up as you'd expect so microsoft teams is updating there we go uh we can see here that uh, two updates, check all, uh, 6.52, current version, some application don't allow. So I may have to go manually and update these in the uh, app store because it doesn't allow for, or I may have to go inside the programs and do it. Login items, I really like this because I turned a lot of things off here. You know when you turn your Mac on, all of a sudden everything opens up, everything 
all the bloody programs that you've ever logged on to seem to all open up at login. So, for instance, this one is that is that cloud app. I don't want it to uh, open automatically. I don't use it, to be fair. Uh, in fact, if I close it here. Antivirus I want open. Uh, I'm not sure what this one is. Mac Keeper, so I'll leave that. Flux, that, that changes my lighting on my screen, so I'll leave that on, depending on the time of day. Google Chrome. In theory, I don't need Google Chrome to open. Uh, you can have Mail. So at the moment, my Mac pretty much only allows Flux to open, uh, just because I would forget about Flux if I didn't. So I've, I've, I will speed up the, um, the login process of me signing in by not opening Spotify and not opening um, WhatsApp and all these other things that maybe I don't need to use straight away that were slowing down my, my morning routine of turning things on. Even mail, you might not want to turn your email on on a login routine because you don't need to check it straight away. It's up to you, right? Uh, this is an interesting thing. This is this is going through all my past emails and it sort of looks for any email that has um, had some sort of data breach. So this in this one here says in July, 2021, uh, content creation service promos allegedly breached stolen contents addresses and passwords so you say I've been and changed my password so if it's got anything here I can mark that as changed uh, same it'll go down same with this one sensitive source this source has been marked as sensitive due to one of the following reasons reviewing the source right so it, it's checking the information and it's saying, have you been and checked that you've changed this? Uh, and I haven't got any others. I had some other older emails that I don't use anymore that I got rid of. The VPN, the VPN's interested, isn't it? Because I didn't realize that MacKeeper had a VPN on it. And although I don't use the VPN, I actually Google why you would. And uh, why use a VPN, right? And it came up with this, right? Eight reasons to use a VPN. Uh, security on a public Wi-Fi. So if you're out in a coffee shop or something, it's uh, or a hotel or anything like that, worth having a VPN. Data privacy from your internet services. We know that Facebook and Google and YouTube and everything's watching what we're uh, clicking on, what we're doing, and a VPN secures you from that. Oh, this is actually from your internet service provider. So your BT, your Sky. Maybe not letting them know what information you don't want them to know. Uh, this is for the apps. Access any content. So if you wanted to sign up for some US uh, content or you're in you, you're on vacation or holiday and you want to sign in with a UK um, IP address so you can keep watching UK content, you can do that. And security when working remotely. So there's various reasons why you would use a VPN and it is really easy to turn it on and uh, you would be able to use your computer. So let's say we're in Canada, or should I do somewhere a bit closer to home? Uh, let's go maybe to France. Let's go to number one in France. Turn on. So now there's an integrated VPN inside uh, inside your uh, Mac Keeper. What's my IP? Here we go. So this should put me somewhere in France, which it does look. So it's, it's a, a VPN in there as well. So that's another reason at £5 a month. Or, or £10 a month if you're paying monthly, £5 a month if you're paying. If you need a VPN, it comes with MacKeeper. I'm going to turn it off. And finally, another thing I didn't realise, I know you can get free versions of this, is um, an, a, a, an ad uh, blocker. So basically, if I go to YouTube or any um, website, None of the, and, and as a YouTuber who has adverts, it might not be something I want to tell people. Usually there's an advert in this top corner. Usually there's adverts everywhere. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's maybe go to this. I'll turn the sound off. 
So you see that no advert ran at the start of the video. Let's go this one. No advert. So you can watch YouTube ad free. Uh, da -da -da -da. What will definitely have adverts? This one. So no adverts running on YouTube. No adverts around it. Um, what is it? Sheffield. Let's go Sheffield Star. If you go to a newspaper these days, there's adverts everywhere. Oh, I don't know if I... Oh. Da -da 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 -da. Please confirm the... Oh, my God. Right, so accept. But now I can browse a website with... I mean, if I turn it off... If I turn it off up here, right? Uh, da -da -da -da. Stop ad. Turn off. Right, refresh to see the changes. And it may not work straight away because the cache in. But now you'll see uh, uh, it's trying to load. It's trying to load the ads, right? Here's the ads. The ads are back. And all of a sudden the website is is pretty much unusable because of ads. You can't even read the story because of ads. So I really like the feature of the ad blocker. Um, so I hope that was kind of a quick fly around. I know it's not telling you in depth. I didn't really find anything because I'd done all my cleanups and I'd done all my stuff. There's obviously tech support that you can get help with. Um, my antivirus is still running and finding stuff. I like the security of knowing there's an antivirus on my computer now. Uh, the computer feels like it's been faster since I've switched it on. But I don't know enough about Mac backend. I'm not a hardware expert. Uh, I know to go to the activity monitor and to tinker with it. Sorry, that was my dog returning. Um, yeah, so I know how to go to the activity monitor. I know how to go and delete things. I know how to delve into things. But I find it easier if everything's in one place. If everything's, you know, if something's showing up, right, maybe I need to update that. Well, I do use Cloud App. I need to update that. I need to update this. Maybe the login items I need to change. If I give this a blast, does that speed it up? Is there something in there lagging me down? Is there a program that I've got rid of that's still hanging about? Have I got any big files I need to clean out to try and find some empty space? Uh, I didn't. I don't think I cleaned on. Did I clean? Oh yeah, I did click on save cleanup. You know, programs that aren't used, big files, um, a lot of things that just need a. A clean up into a tidy up and that's all Mac Keeper does but then when you add in um, things like the, the um, VPN and the ad blocker so you get the antivirus the ad blocker and VPN uh, in as well as all those other cleanup programs it's I'm enjoying it I like it will I have it in a few months time will I keep playing paying for it I'm not sure uh, but I hope I've given you an idea as to whether you're going to give it a go. I think there's a free there's a free trial. Um, I think there's a free seven-day trial. It might not get all the features. Um, da -da 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 -da. I think if you go to to um, to sign out, it'll offer you a free trial. Will it? If I... Uh... I've been... I've seen a free trial somewhere. Let's try and clear browsing data. I feel like it popped up and showed me a free trial. Everything's going to log me out now, isn't it? Let's go back. Refresh it. We'll agree to the cookie. Oh, there was definitely a, a, um, a little pop-up that just said, if you want a, a, a day trial or a free trial, I'm sorry, I can't remember where it was. As I was browsing around, it may not be um, as obvious. Oh, there we go. You've read it right, one week for a dollar. So you can get it for a dollar. Try it out like I've tried it out. If it's no good for you, you can uh, uh, cancel that. I'm guessing you'll let you cancel it. Uh, prepare your Mac at just 62 for a whole year. This means you'll pay as little as, as one dollar for the first week without this deal. Your regular payment would be ten ninety five. Grab your special deal right now. Be careful before you sign up for that, as long as you make sure you're not signing up for um 
12 month plan. Yeah, maybe. So get a 11 day free trial. Uh, after trial, a year subscription in the first future renewals. So if you do sign up for it and you don't want it, make sure that you cancel that subscription uh, before the week's trial is over. But hopefully, you know, that's why I went month to month. I'm going to see if I use it for a month. And if I need it longer than that, then I will. But I like the the, uh, the thought of the virus protection. Um, they had blockers coming handy already. Any questions, leave them below. Uh, I will try to answer you if I can. If I've got a MacKeeper discount code or anything, check pnuk.com forward slash MacKeeper. Uh, and all my information will be on my website. All training. Maybe I'll do a training course in this and put things together for you to learn more. Uh, not maybe, I will do a training course. So if you go to pnuk.com forward slash MacKeeper, I'll put a, a training course together uh, for you to be able to uh, learn more about exactly what it's doing for your Mac. But hopefully this helps. See you again soon. Thanks for watching.